Hey, this is Derek with two R's. I'm gonna show you how to take out the tub and clean a top load Whirlpool washer the right way. We're gonna start by coming to the back and removing these three quarter inch screws. I always use drills and nut drivers, but you can also use a quarter inch screwdriver, you know, whatever you like. In this third screw, we're gonna take off our wire cover and set it to the side with our three screws. Now the top is loose enough, so if we pull it towards us and then push it back towards the back, we can lift it up. And I always like to hang it so we're not relying on these clips in the back, which aren't strong enough to fully support the top anyway. Now to take off the top cover ring, uh, we're gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and go around and pop these clips. Just be careful you don't break them or drop your screwdriver like I always do. Now to remove the softener dispenser, just pull it straight out and it's usually pretty nasty. I, mean, I always use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull out the inner agitator cap, which is meant to protect the agitator dogs from being covered in fabric softener. Now we're gonna remove the agitator bolt, which is a 7 16 socket. So go ahead and grab a socket and uh, I use an impact drill. It's really easy to take out most of the time. Sometimes you can strip it, don't strip it. Now we can just pull out the upper part of the agitator and put our hands um, get our fingers underneath the actual agitator and pull that out and see how nasty this thing is this is why i always say do not use fabric softener this is absolutely disgusting i'll show you what i use to clean them later now the fun part removing the drive block nut the best and easiest way to do it is using a spanner wrench and a hammer um, you can improvise a tool if you'd like I, i'm gonna make a few videos on how to do that i, I don't i don't recommend it because it makes it just more of a, a pain in the butt and also be aware that there's different types of these spanner wrenches there's not just one one kind so you got to make sure you get the kind that fits your washer there's kind for GE Maytag and Whirlpool once we've completely removed the drive block nut we're going to attempt to pull the tub out six light baskets can be a lot harder to remove than the old school direct drive so just grab you some croil let it soak for a, little, a while but do not smack the tube do not smack anything just wiggle it if you have to and then you can finally pull it out now if you buy a used washing machine this is likely what it looks like inside or you know if yours is six seven years old i don't know maybe even two three years old it just depends on how much you use it and how much detergent and softener you use but if you've ever had those brown flakes show up on your clothes and a wash um, this is likely where they come from you know your your clothes just can't really be getting clean if you're washing them in a washing machine that is this filthy nasty dirty so before i sell a washing machine i always strip it disassemble it and then i clean it so i use um pine sole because it's my favorite i love the way it smells and cleans then we break out the pressure washer and just to make sure we remove everything uh, the pressure washer works phenomenally well so i suggest if you ever want to try it i suggest trying it and it's kind of satisfying just watching all that stuff peel off but i mean it looks brand new again so besides some of the stains which you know they don't make a difference um, then we're going to go ahead and spray out the fabric softener uh, or the upper agitator it's the best way to clean the fabric softener i promise you that and then we're going to go ahead and soak down the outer basket with pine saw and i have a hose in the shop so that way i can kind of spray all the crud loose and of course we're going to scrub it all down with a brush as well and the, the biggest benefit to doing it this way is that after we're done cleaning everything we're just literally going to turn the washing machine on and drain it we don't have to keep dumping buckets of dirty water out then i always like to wipe down the the top of the cabinet and the inside places that i can't get to you know after we shut the lid now we're going to put the washer in diagnostic mode so we can enter manual test mode and drain it how to do this is rotate the knob left right 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 left right now that we have all of our leds blinking we're going to rotate the knob clockwise until only spin and done are lit up we're going to hit start now we can rotate the knob clockwise until only rinse spin and done all three are lit up now we can go ahead and hit start and this is going to turn on the pump and go ahead and drain all of that nasty filthy funky water um, directly into the standpipe hopefully that's where you have your drain hose going and we're going to go ahead and grab the hose so we can hose everything down and get a kind of uh, final clean and see where if there's anything else we need to scrub down. After our water is good and cleared out, we're going to go to the front and start again so we can stop the pump and we're going to continue scrubbing and spraying some more. So this is actually the pump filter. That's what they call it. It's not really a filter, but anyway, it's pretty nasty on the other side. So we're gonna clean that off, make sure there's no obstructions down inside of our pump since we broke loose all that buildup and debris. And uh, once we got that clean, we're gonna go ahead and put it back. And all it is is just two quarter inch screws. These are a little bit longer than all the rest that we've removed. And just, you know, make sure you don't tighten it down too much uh, and strip out the screws. That This is plastic, uh, metal screws into plastic. 
All right, now we're ready to go ahead and put our basket uh, back on top of the drive block. Just make sure it sits in there uh, nice and flush like it should and put our drive block nut back on, kind of tighten it down, hand tighten it. Um, then grab our spanner wrench and give it a few good whacks. Make sure it is in there firm. You don't want to leave it loose at all. I got this little steamer from Walmart for like 30 bucks, I think, and it's amazing. It takes off all of this crud that's built up and won't come off real easy. Some of it's not necessary, I'm just being extra. And then to get all the all the detergent out of this uh, softener dispenser, the best thing I found is a toothbrush. Some of these come all the way apart, this one doesn't. And the ones that don't, you just have to dig it out and then keep spraying it with water and shaking it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our agitator, the lower agitator back on the splines on the drive shaft, and then be sure to put your plastic washer back on top now we can grab our upper agitator this isn't a new one this is literally the one that i cleaned i mean it looks brand new we're gonna go ahead and stick that back on top as well it can be a little bit tricky trying to put the agitator cam back in just got to make sure you line up those four tabs and we're gonna push down on it to hear it click but it has to click on there or it's not on correctly and then we can put our 7 16th bolt back in. I always like to use needle nose pliers. It's just easier to put everything because you can't fit your hand down in there. And then hand tighten it before you use the drill or anything else. Believe me, I learned the hard way about how to get a stripped bolt out of the shaft. Now we can put our inner cover back in, put our fabric softener dispenser back on top. Now we can clip our top ring back in place and lower the top down. You're gonna have to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it on those hooks correctly. Then we can go to the back and put our three screws back in. Two are gonna be on the, the clips that hold down the top. Then of course the cover that we took off of the wire harness and the pressure sensor tube in the back right there. This was my very first full length washing machine cleaner uh, video. So if you liked it, um, I'm only gonna get better, I promise. I'm used to doing short form on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook Reels. Um, hit that subscribe button. I promise there's much better stuff to come.